Hi there, in the video when I machined a cylinder liner for the farm boy um, I measured uh, that it was out by about two thou over its overall length and uh, from one or two comments I received um, I've sort of come to the conclusion that that's probably not good enough um, so what I've decided to do is to have a go at um, remachining it um, using uh, between centres boring bar and uh, until now I hadn't got a, a between centres boring bar but what I've done is I've just sent off and received a kit from Hemingway's um, which contains materials and instructions on how to make three boring bars so in this video I'm going to be making one of them Well, in uh, true Hemingway style, um, all the contents came um, heavily bubble wrapped. I've taken a lot of the bubble wrapping off. Um, the components, um, the quality is very good. Uh, no problems with, with any of it. And um, the plans and uh, description. Five pages of description um, explaining initially what a between centers boring bar is and um, I think how to make it I hope and two large sheets uh, detailing the plans now the kit comes with material um, to enable you to make three different size boring bars there's the half inch three quarter inch and one inch and for the purpose of this video I'm going to concentrate on the three quarter inch because that's the one I'll need to uh, machine out the um, cylinder sleeve for the farm boy. So first of all centering the four jaw chuck. Face the end. Center drill. So now just to uh, cut a little recess, and that's to protect the center from knocks. So now I need to switch it round in the four jaw chuck and repeat the same process on the other side but I'll do all that off camera. So using a thread cutting tool the instructions uh, say you need to mark a line midpoint and that's where the uh, tool will be going. So I need to drill and ream um, a quarter inch hole where that mark is. So first of all I need to find the centre of the bar. So I've got this edge finder here on the far end. And if I move the y axis forward until it finds the edge, or rather backwards, try again. just found the edge now. So I'll uh, reset my uh, DRO move to the other side Oops. It's 
just down the edge there. So I uh, need to have the setting on my DRO. And then move to the zero position on the DRO. And that will centre me on the bar. So I need to lock the Y axis. Unlock the X. And now I'll drill through with a 6mm drill bit which is just under a quarter of an inch. So centre drill first. Now reaming with a quarter inch reamer. Okay, so I've moved the bar to the right hand side so the hole is outside of the vise. And I've put this bar through here to make sure that it's horizontal. And I've then tightened up the vise. So I can remove that now. And all I need to do now is to centre drill, then drill uh, through to the hole with a 4.5mm drill bit and then I need to tap to M5. But I'll do all that off camera. We now need to put some flats on each side. That's the boring bar finished, um, so now it's a matter of concentrating on the micrometer head, which is this piece here. And the first thing to make is a locking screw made out of this piece of half inch bar, which will go somewhere on here, once that's all machined up. Well I've faced the end off, and the next thing to do is to put a 60 degree taper on the end. So I've um, Move the compound slide 30 degrees and it's just a matter of um, moving the cross slide in 10 thou and then drawing the tool back. This is a left hand tool here. Well that turned out pretty well. Um, what I need to do now is to turn this down to uh, six millimetres in diameter. Now I suppose I could have turned it down to six millimetres and then put the taper on it. Um, but anyway it was really enjoyable doing that and uh, seeing it come to uh, sort of fruition. And uh, I think now it's time for a bit of maths because I need to work out where to set my carriage stop from that point up to here. So this is sort of what I've got at the moment uh, with a, a half an inch diameter. 
and I want to end up with something like that. So six millimeters in diameter. Now the thread needs to be half an inch long and I don't know the distance between where the thread's going to start and the point so I need to work that out. But one thing I do know is that the angle here, this is a bigger sort of enlargement of it, this angle here is 60 degrees and that's the distance I need to work out. Now I know the midpoint to the edge is three millimetres because it's half of six. So tangent is equal to the perpendicular over the three. Tan 60 equals P over three. So tan 60 multiplied by three is equal to that distance. Tan 60 is 1.732, multiply, multiply that by P and I get 5.196 millimetres and that converts to 0 0.205 of an inch. Now, if I add half an inch onto that, I get 0 0.705. So the distance between the point and where the uh, thread is going to stop is 0 0.705. So on the lathe, what I can do is I can set my tool bit there, withdraw it and then using the dial I can come along 0 0.705 and then lock it, put the carriage stop on rather and then I can start milling this down to six millimetres in diameter. So I've just withdrawn the tool from the uh, end of the point, I've set the dial gauge to zero and I want to go around uh, seven revolutions plus five increments. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and five. And down here, you can see I've already set the uh, carriage stop. So I can't actually go beyond that now. So all I need to do is here. I need to reduce that down to six millimeters in diameter. Well, just check my maths were right. So that's half an inch. spot on. So what I need to do now is just thread that section there to uh, M6 um, but I'll do that off camera. So I've just cut a bit of a relief here with this parting tool because obviously when you're tapping you can't get right up to the end. Um, so that's worked out okay. So what I need to do now is to use the uh, Hemingway's knurling tool to put a knurl on that. Well, I'm really happy with the way that's turned out. And what I didn't mention was that's my first attempt. And I got it in my head that the thread was M5 and not M6. But anyway, I got there in the end. So the next item to machine is this micrometer head. So I've centred it in the four jaw chuck. And I need to drill a hole uh, around about three quarters of an inch in diameter so I can get a sliding fit on the boarding bar. Um, so I'll, I'll centre drill first of all, I'll open it up to around about 14 millimetres and then I'll use um, a boarding bar to open it up to the three quarters of an inch. So I'll get back to you uh, once I've got the boarding bar in place. So the instruction did mention that um, this gun metal can actually grab your drills somewhat so you've got to take it nice and steady and I did have a grab uh, but anyway I got it up to 12 millimetres 
in diameter and that's just big enough to get this boring bar in. Um, so I'm going to bore it up to um, three quarters of an inch. Um, once I get close to that I'll keep on stopping and uh, checking to see if I can get the bar in. It just ni needs a nice smooth fit. That looks like a good sliding fit to me. So while it's in the four jaw chuck there's a good opportunity to face up this end and uh, this edge here. Okay, so I've just drilled a couple of holes on the mill. Uh, that's 5mm in diameter, and that'll be tapped later on to M6. And um, that is drilled and reamed to 5 sixteenths of an inch. And now I can get on and make the threaded bush, which will go through there. And uh, also on the 3D printer, I've made a couple of these little caps to protect the ends. So the bush is very straightforward, it's just a matter of uh, machining this piece of uh, mild steel bar, um, half an inch in diameter. And uh, first of all you just drill it and then tap it to a quarter by 40, um, to a depth of uh, just around about half an inch I think. And then it's a matter of machining this down to 5 sixteenths in diameter, so you can get a decent fit on there. You need to leave a bit of space because it's going to be loctited in place and um, now it's just a matter of parting it off. But I'll do that off camera. Well that was all very straightforward. Uh, I thought I'd make all three for each of the boring bars uh, while I had all the tools out and uh, the idea is that goes in like It'll be locked tighter in as well. Well the adjusting screw is made out of a piece of silver steel um, a quarter inch in diameter and what you need to do first of all is just ten turn this end down and that's the piece that well, will need to be hardened and that will be used to um, touch on the uh, top of the tool. Now uh, this needs to be threaded a, a quarter by 40 TPI and uh, it needs to be threaded for an inch in length and I was hoping to do this using the lathe uh, but I, I think my lathe can only do a maximum of 20 TPI uh, so hey ho I'm going to have to use a die now it is a high speed steel die um, but I have just have concerns that uh, whether it's capable of actually cutting all this thread but uh, we'll give it a try I'll, I'll, I'll have a go off camera because it's a bit tight and then I'll get back to you. Well that seems to have gone remarkably well. So all I need to do now is just to uh, cut it off to length with this uh, little jeweller's saw. Well that's turned out very well, very happy with that. 
Now the instructions suggest that you actually make three of these, uh, one for each boring bar, uh, but to be honest I'll, I'll only ever use one boring bar at a time so I'm just going to make one of them. So for the knob it was just a matter of turning this piece of bar down uh, to dimension and drilling a quarter inch hole in the end and uh, that's how it will look once it's loctited in. So what I need to do is just to part this off, I'll do it off camera, but then I need to work out how to put some graduation marks on here. Okay so uh, in the end I decided to cut it off with a hacksaw. I've reversed it in the three jaw chuck, I've faced the end and now I'm going to put um, a 30 degree little taper on the edge. OK, I think that'll be good enough, so uh, I'll just finish off with a bit of wet and dry. So unfortunately on my lathe I don't have the ability to rotate the chuck by a certain amount of degrees. Um, so I'm going to um, cut these graduation marks on the mini mill. Um, so I've set up the rotary table and um, I'm using this gear cutter just to cut about five thou in. in to make the mark. Well I must say I'm really chuffed with the way that's turned out. Now I held it uh, in the rotary table using this uh, piece of bar and I just super glued the knob onto it. So what I need to do now is to apply a bit of heat to take it apart and then I'll either super glue or Loctite it uh, onto the actual thread. Well that's worked out pretty well. Put some marks on up here, every fifth one and a line across. So I just did that in the mill um, using that gear cutter again. So what I need to do now is to make a little dimple for the locking screw to go into. And the way to do that is you screw this into the position where the tool's going to go. And it's a matter of just putting this on the mill and um, marking that point, removing it and then drilling a little dimple and doing the same on the opposite side as well. But I'll do all that off camera. Well, it looks okay. And the last thing I think to make is the carrier, which fits on the end. So the carrier is made out of a piece of uh, mild steel. And there's two holes to be drilled, uh, which I've marked up. Um, that's for the larger hole. Um, three quarters of an inch in diameter to go over the um, shaft and uh, a smaller one uh, three eighths of an inch which will hold the sort of pin. Uh, I'm going to drill that on the uh, on the lathe using the four jaw chuck.
Well, I drilled the other hole uh, using the mill and uh, I've marked out um, where it needs to be shaped and uh, there's quite a bit of work there. So it's going to be a mixture of hack sawing and uh, milling and a bit of rotary table work. But I'll do all that off camera, otherwise this video will never end. Well, it certainly took a while to get the carrier um, into shape, but I'm uh, quite happy with the result. Uh, so that's the bar complete now. Um, one thing I didn't mention was that um, the micrometer uh, adjusting knob, uh, with it being 40 TPI, that represents um, 40 turns to an inch. So one turn represents 25 thou and the fact that I've got 25 graduations on the knob each graduation represents a thousandth of an inch so the idea is to adjust the tool uh, when the tool's in place and is clamped you, you place the micrometer on the bar um, and you position uh, the tip onto the head <coughs> and you touch it then you loosen the tool off and then you move um, the knob by as many thou that you want which will push the tool out by that same amount. Then you lock the tool and then you take all this off the bar before you do the uh, machining operation. So hopefully we'll see that uh, working when I uh, come to remachine the cylinder that I made in uh, one of my previous videos. Well, I must say that took a while to make. It seemed to take forever. But I'm really happy with the way it's turned out. And I can't wait to uh, try it out for the first time. Um, also, I'd like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice. And I've received some really uh, good tips recently. Uh, but anyway, um, I hope you like the result. And uh, I hope to see you later.